Marianne Faithful, an English singer, songwriter, and actress, has made a lasting impact on the world of music and fashion, captivating audiences for over six decades. Her unique voice, captivating stage presence, and unconventional lifestyle have made her an icon of the 1960s and beyond. Faithful's career has been a roller coaster of highs and lows, marked by her early success as a pop star, her tumultuous personal life, and her remarkable comeback throughout the late 20th century. Faithful's influence extends far beyond her musical achievements. She has been a muse to many artists and musicians, and her bohemian style has inspired countless fashion trends. Her unapologetic attitude and raw honesty in her music and interviews have made her a symbol of female empowerment and resilience. Despite the challenges she has faced throughout her life, including drug addiction and health issues, Faithful has continued to create art that resonates with audiences around the world, cementing her status as a true cultural icon. Marianne Faithful was born on December 29, 1946, in Hampstead, London, to a British military officer and an Austro-Hungarian baroness. Faithful's father, Major Robert Glynn Faithful, was a British Army spy, and her mother, Eva von Sacher-Massoch, was the great-niece of Leopold von Sacher-Massoch, whose erotic novel, Venus in Furs, inspired the term masochism. Faithful's aristocratic background and her parents' artistic inclinations shaped her early life and set the stage for her future as a creative force. Growing up, Faithful attended a convent school where she received a strict Catholic education. Despite the rigid environment, she developed a love for literature and poetry, which would later influence her songwriting. Faithful's rebellious spirit and her desire to break free from the confines of her upbringing led her to explore the vibrant London music scene of the early 1960s. In 1964, at the age of 17, Faithful's life took a dramatic turn when she attended a Rolling Stones launch party. There, she caught the attention of Andrew Lug Oldham, the band's manager, who was immediately struck by her beauty and presence. Oldham saw in Faithful the potential for a new kind of female pop star, one who could embody the youth culture's rebellious spirit and challenge the era's gender norms. Under his guidance, Faithful embarked on a journey that would transform her into an iconic figure of the 1960s and beyond. Marianne Faithful's rise to fame began with her debut single, As Tears Go By, released in 1964. The song, written by Mick Jagger and Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones, showcased Faithful's ethereal voice and emotive delivery. The single was an instant success, reaching number nine on the UK singles chart and establishing Faithful as a promising new talent in the British music scene. In 1965, Faithful married John Dunbar, an art dealer and member of the London counterculture. Later that year, she gave birth to their son, Nicholas. Despite her newfound role as a wife and mother, Faithful continued to pursue her music career, releasing several successful singles and her debut album, Marianne Faithful, in 1965. During this period, Faithful became increasingly involved with the Rolling Stones, particularly with the frontman Mick Jagger. Their tryst, which began in 1966, was highly publicized and controversial, given that both were in relationships at the time. Faithful's influence on the band was significant. She is credited with introducing them to the works of avant-garde artists and writers, which would later inspire their music and image. During the mid-1960s, Marianne Faithful's life was a whirlwind of fame, creativity, and controversy. One of the most infamous incidents occurred in 1967 when police raided a party at Keith Richards' country house, Redlands. Faithful was found wearing nothing but a fur rug, leading to sensationalized media coverage and public speculation about her relationship with the Rolling Stones. Another notable event was her 23rd birthday party in 1968, attended by a who's who of the 60s music scene, including the Beatles, Brian Jones, and Mick Jagger. The party allegedly featured a nude model jumping out of a cake, adding to Faithful's reputation as a wild child of the era. In 1968, Faithful made her acting debut in the film Girl on a Motorcycle. Her performance as a free-spirited woman who embarks on a psychedelic journey across Europe earned her critical acclaim and established her as a multifaceted artist. This role also cemented her status as a counterculture icon and a symbol of the era's rebellious spirit. 
Faithful success in both music and acting during this period marked the height of her initial rise to fame, and her influence on popular culture would only continue to grow in the years to come. In the late 1960s, at the height of her fame, Marianne Faithful's personal life began to unravel due to her increasing drug use. The pressure of being in the public eye, coupled with a stillborn child with Mick Jagger, led her to seek solace in heroin and cocaine. As her addiction spiraled out of control, Faithful's career suffered, and she eventually found herself homeless on the streets of Soho, London. Her affair with Jagger became a media sensation, with their every move and indiscretion dissected in lurid detail by the newspapers. The constant invasion of privacy and the public judgment of their relationship took a heavy toll on Faithful's mental health and exacerbated her struggles with addiction. The tabloid's obsession with scandal and celebrity gossip created a toxic environment that made it difficult for Faithful to focus on her art and personal growth. Despite these challenges, Faithful's collaborations and connections with other artists helped her to find a way forward and to continue expressing her unique voice and perspective. Her resilience in the face of the evils of fame and the tabloid press is a testament to her strength of character and her enduring influence on the world of music and art. In May 1970, Marianne Faithful's life took a turn for the worse when she ended her relationship with Mick Jagger after starting an affair with Anglo-Irish nobleman Patty Rossmore. In the same year, she lost custody of her son, which led to a suicide attempt. Faithful's career and personal life spiraled downward, and she made only a few appearances, including a performance with David Bowie in October 1973, singing Sonny and Cher's I Got You Babe. For two years, Faithful lived on the streets of London's Soho district, battling heroin addiction and anorexia nervosa. Friends intervened and enrolled her in an NHS heroin-assisted treatment program, but she struggled to control her addiction. During the early 70s, Faithful's voice underwent a permanent change due to severe laryngitis and persistent drug abuse. Her once melodic vocals were replaced by a cracked, lower-pitched timbre. In 1975, she released the country-influenced record Dream In My Dreams, which was re-released in 1978 as Faithless with additional tracks and reached number one on the Irish album's chart. In 1979, Faithful made a remarkable comeback with the critically acclaimed album Broken English. The album, partially influenced by the punk explosion and her marriage to Ben Brierley from the band The Vibrators, showcased her transformed voice and raw emotions in songs like the title track, which addressed terrorism in Europe and Why Do You Do It, a punk reggae adaptation of a poem by Heathcote Williams. Despite a disastrous appearance on Saturday Night Live in February 1980, Broken English marked a significant turning point in Faithful's career. After the release of Dangerous Acquaintances in 1981, Marianne Faithful moved to New York City. Despite her comeback, Faithful struggled with addiction in the mid-1980s, leading to incidents such as breaking her jaw while under the influence and experiencing a cardiac arrest. In 1985, she released Rich Kid Blues, a double record showcasing her pop and rock and roll output, and performed Ballad of the Soldier's Wife on Hal Wilner's Kurt Wilde tribute album, Lost in the Stars. Faithful sought treatment at the Hazelden Foundation Clinic in Minnesota and McLean Hospital in Massachusetts. During this time, while still married to Ben Brierley, she began an affair with Howard Tose, a mentally ill man who later committed suicide. Faithful's divorce from Brierley was finalized in 1987, and she dedicated a thank you to Tose on the back sleeve of her album, Strange Weather. Faithful's 1987 album, Strange Weather, produced by Hal Wilner, marked her venture into jazz and blues, and became her most critically acclaimed work of the decade. The album featured a new recording of As Tears Go By, with Faithful's more mature, gravelly voice bringing new depth to the song she had initially recorded at 17. The diverse collection of covers on Strange Weather was chosen after Faithful and Wilner spent weekends listening to countless 20th century songs, including works by Bob Dylan, Jerome Kern, Otto Harbach, Billie Holiday, Bessie Smith, and Tom Waits. In 1988, Faithful married writer and actor Giorgio Della Terza, but the marriage ended in divorce in 1991. In the early 1990s, 
Marianne Faithful's musical career experienced a resurgence with her live album, Blazing Away, recorded at St. Anne's Cathedral in Brooklyn. The album featured Faithful revisiting songs from throughout her career, backed by a talented group of musicians, including guitarist Barry Reynolds, former band member Garth Hudson, and pianist Dr. John. Critics praised the album's autobiographical tone and Faithful's unique vocal style. Faithful's fascination with the music of Weimar-era Germany led to the release of 20th Century Blues, an album focusing on the works of Kurt Weil, Bertolt Brecht, and Noel Coward, followed by The Seven Deadly Sins with the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra. A successful concert and cabaret tour, accompanied by pianist Paul Trueblood, culminated in the filming of the DVD Marianne Faithful Sings Kurt Weil at the Montreal Jazz Festival. In 1998, Faithful released A Perfect Stranger, The Island Anthology, a two-disc compilation chronicling her years with Island Records. The following year, she ranked 25th in VH1's 100 Greatest Women in Rock and Roll and released the DVD Dreaming My Dreams, which contained material about her childhood, relationships, and a live concert originally broadcast on PBS. In addition to her music career, Faithful also returned to acting in the later years of her career. She appeared in a number of films, including Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette and Sam Grabarsky's Irina Palm, bringing the same raw intensity and emotional depth to her acting that she brought to her music. Faithful's performances were widely praised by critics and audiences alike and helped to cement her status as a multi-talented artist and cultural icon. Marianne Faithful's influence on fashion and style cannot be overstated. In the 1960s, she embodied the bohemian lifestyle, becoming an icon of the era's counterculture movement. Her unique blend of vintage and contemporary clothing, often featuring flowing dresses, wide-brimmed hats, and ethnic-inspired accessories, defined the boho chic look that would become synonymous with the 2010s. Faithful style was a reflection of her free-spirited, adventurous personality and her rejection of conventional norms. As a style icon, Faithful's influence extends far beyond the 1960s. In the 1990s, her look was revived and reinterpreted by designers like Anna Sui and Christian Lacroix, who drew inspiration from her bohemian aesthetic. The heroine chic trend of the 90s, characterized by pale skin, dark eye makeup, and a waifish, androgynous silhouette, also owed a debt to Faithful's iconic style during her years of drug addiction. Beyond fashion, Faithful's unconventional life and career have inspired countless musicians and artists. Her raw, honest lyrics and her willingness to bear her soul in her music have made her a role model for generations of female artists who refuse to conform to society's expectations. Her ability to reinvent herself and to overcome personal struggles has also made her a symbol of resilience and perseverance in the face of adversity. Her music, style, and attitude have been embraced by generations of outsiders, rebels, and free thinkers who see in her a kindred spirit. From the punk rockers of the 1970s, to the grunge musicians of the 1990s, to the Coachella bohos of the 2000s and 10s, Faithful's influence can be seen in countless subcultures and artistic movements. Her legacy as a cultural icon and a trailblazer for alternative style and expression continues to inspire new generations of artists and fans alike. Faithful's influence can be heard in the work of countless musicians who have followed in her footsteps. Her raw, confessional style and her blend of rock, folk, and avant-garde influences have inspired artists like PJ Harvey, Courtney Love, and Lana Del Rey, all of whom have cited Faithful as a major influence on their own music. Faithful's impact can also be seen in the way that female musicians are perceived and valued in the music industry today. Thanks in part to her example, women in music are now more likely to be recognized for their songwriting, their musicianship, and their artistic vision, rather than just their looks or their sex appeal. Beyond her influence on music, Faithful is also recognized as a cultural icon and a symbol of resilience. Her life story from her early success and her struggles with addiction to her comeback and her enduring relevance has become a touchstone for people around the world who have faced their own challenges and setbacks. 
Faithful's ability to overcome adversity and to continue creating art in the face of immense personal and professional obstacles has made her a hero to many, and her legacy as a survivor and a fighter continues to inspire people to this day. Marianne Faithful's journey through the tumultuous landscape of fame in the 1960s showcases the unique challenges faced by celebrities during that era. The intense media scrutiny, public judgment, and lack of privacy that Faithful endured were relatively new phenomena as the concept of fame was still evolving. Her struggles with addiction and personal relationships were magnified by the relentless tabloid coverage, which often prioritized sensationalism over empathy. In today's cultural climate, where there is a greater understanding of mental health issues and the pressures of stardom, Faithful's experiences might be viewed through a more compassionate lens. Her resilience and ability to overcome these challenges would likely be celebrated as a testament to her strength and perseverance. Throughout her career, Faithful has pioneered several female archetypes that have become iconic in popular culture. As a muse to the Rolling Stones and other artists, she embodied the idea of the creative catalyst, inspiring and influencing the work of those around her. Her transformation into a powerful, introspective chanteuse in the 1970s and beyond demonstrated her ability to reinvent herself and claim her own artistic identity. Faithful's enduring status as a fashion icon has spanned decades, with her bohemian style and fearless approach to self-expression influencing countless designers and trendsetters. In each decade, new generations of artists and fans have discovered and emulated Faithful, finding inspiration in her music, her style, and her unwavering commitment to authenticity.